So welcome, everyone. My name is Sherry Salloway Black. I am the outgoing director of the Partnership for Tribal Governance at the National Congress of American Indians. Um, and those who uh, know me have probably heard me cry wolf for a number of years that I'm going to retire or semi-retire, um, and that n nobody believes me anymore. However, <clears throat> I, am, I am fortunate today to introduce to you my replacement, who's coming in as the incoming director of the Partnership for Tribal Governance at, at NCAI, and I'll, I'll wait for a moment on that. But just to tell you a little bit about the, direct, uh, the Partnership for Tribal Governance at NCAI, it's a program in which is really trying to help organize our training, technical assistance, and education resources at NCAI. And this session is an example. Over the past four to five years, we've really tried to increase the amount of um, sharing, peer sharing, tribal leaders um, sharing um, information about their efforts to strengthen the capacity of their governance. Uh, and one prime example are uh, really looking at tribal constitutions and their role. So we hope to have more um, training and technical assess uh, assistance as the, uh, as the um, years go on. And the person who is the incoming uh, director of the Partnership for Tribal Governance has a really great pedigree to do that. It's Dr. Ian Record, who has spent the last 13 years at Native Nations Institute at the University of Arizona in Tucson and 10 years as the manager for their educational resources. So we're excited about that. I'm going to phase out over the next uh, six months to try to support Ian coming in. So if you're, um, so, so look forward to more training and technical assistance and education opportunities, uh, not just from NCAI, but also um, through and with our partners such as Native Nations Institute and this morning as you saw from Honoring Nations at the Harvard Project on American Indian Economic Development. So without further ado, I'd like to have um, Ian Record come up and he's our moderator for this panel. Thank you. Thank you everyone and welcome. Um, as uh, Sherry mentioned, this is the session Modern uh, Tribal Governments, Tribal Constitutions and Tribal Sovereignty. So if you were here for the Contraceptive Technology Conference, that is on the other side of the wall. Um, yeah, I left that, that was a softball on the team for him. Um, I, I had the great honor and privilege of, of following in the very large footsteps of Sherry Solway Black. Um, I, <laughs> I, I was telling her this morning, I said, I'd always heard you'd walked on water, and now I've seen it in person, having followed her around for the first uh, three and a half days of this, um, of this conference. And it's an honor to join such a prestigious and difference-making organization in NCAI. And um, I'll, I look forward to reaching out to all of you who are here, and I'd, I'd be happy to have conversations with you after this session wraps up about how NCAI can um, create and then share resources that help you as tribal leaders um, strengthen your governance and exercise your sovereignty uh, more fully and robustly uh, in order to achieve your nation's uh, short, medium, and uh, long-term priorities. Um, a lot of the work I did at the Native Nations Institute really involved trying to keep up with the incredible swell of what we call uh, their nation building or nation rebuilding activity that's taking place across Indian country and documenting those stories of success and then sharing them back with other nations who face the same uh, governance challenges and are, and are, are yearning for uh, lessons to learn so they can create their own uh, distinct self-governance uh, and sovereignty solutions. Um, what, the way this is gonna be laid out today is um, we have four uh, distinguished panelists with us today, um, all of whom are from nations who have been um, working um, aggressively and comprehensively to strengthen their governance systems in order to achieve their nation's um, sovereign goals. Their goals around sovereignty, around uh, cultural revitalization, um, around economic development, and so forth. And um, they're all at various stages in that process. Um, and they're really emblematic of a growing movement that we're seeing taking place across Indian country. Um, I always share in my work with tribal uh, leaders and tribal audiences that it's not a coincidence that in this age of uh, tribal self-determination, um, as Native nations move 
to reclaim control over their own affairs and, and create vibrant futures of their own design, that they're looking at the governance tools that they have. And often what they're finding is, is that those governance tools are inadequate to meet the challenges. Uh, not just the challenges of today, but the challenges of the future. And, and hand in hand with that, they're often finding as they examine those governance tools a severe and obvious disconnect between their governance systems and their own distinct cultures. Um, I, I think many of you, I would imagine many of you in the room are from um, in Indian Reorganization Act tribes, or as often as shared with us by tribal leaders, oh, we're an IRA tribe, they'll say to me. Um, and I think what we're seeing now is more and more tribes going back and looking at their governance systems and the roots of those systems and figuring out that if we really are serious about creating the future that we want for our people and having our people involved in that process, then we've got to take a really hard look at the, the, the foundational basis of our, of our government and, and how we make decisions and how we implement those decisions you know, day, day to day and also over the long term. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to have, as I mentioned, we have four esteemed panelists. I will go ahead and introduce all of them now. Um, and we're going to do this a little bit differently. I know typically um, when you have multiple panelists in a, in a session like this, you'll just introduce them alphabetically um, so as to not you know, maybe play favorites or something like that. But um, I wanted to um, have them come up in, in a particular order that reflects where they are in their constitutional journeys. Uh, and, and with that in mind, uh, I'd first like to introduce uh, Chairman John Rocky Barrett. Um, he's the longtime chairman of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation, and uh, I believe he's been chairman since 1985, but involved, in, involved as a leader of his government since, since uh, 1971. Um, I always joke with him. I've known him for a long time. Uh, he's he's a, a longtime member of the Advisory Council for the Native Nations Institute, where I, I worked until just recently. And I like to joke with him that I, that I was born the year he took office. <laughs> um, but we're going to have him speak first because uh, his nation engaged in two rounds of constitutional reform, uh, the most recent of which in 2007. And he'll tell um, not just that story, but how they've been living with their new constitution and how they're growing into their new constitutional skin. Uh, and then we'll, uh, John uh, will be followed by uh, Chairwoman Irma Visner, uh, from the White Earth Nation. And uh, White Earth uh, just recently, just about almost a year ago now, right, uh, ratified, I believe it was in November of last year, ratified a new, an entirely new constitution. Um, they did away with the, const with the, the system they had and, and created an entirely new constitution from scratch. And so they're sort of in the, in the nascent, nascent stage of trying to figure out how do we live with this new government that we've created for ourselves. Um, Irma will be followed by Governor uh, Richard Lewarki from the uh, Pueblo of Laguna. And uh, Laguna is a, is a Native nation that, that I've had the great fortune of working with um, uh, closely over the last several years and sort of keeping my finger on the pulse of where things are going um, with their nation. And uh, back in 2012, uh, Laguna engaged in two amendments to their constitution, uh, uh, the most notable of which was removing the um, the Secretary of Interior approval clause from their constitution. And now they're going back and engaging in a more full, comprehensive process of review, reviewing their constitution and trying to figure out what they want their new govern, governance system to look like. Uh, and then finally, uh, well, last but not least, right? Uh, we're gonna hear from Justin Bolio from the Red Lake Nation. Uh, Justin is the coordinator of the, con the Constitution Reform Project at Red Lake. And they are very, they are very uh, early on in the stages of reform. Um, and so I think he'll, he'll provide a very interesting window into uh, issues around process. Um, often what I've seen with Native nations is there might be um, consensus emerging from within the community about what needs to change. But um, sometimes communities are at a loss as to how do we actually approach doing that change? How do we actually develop a process where our people will be involved every step of the way and then the final product will have the ownership of the people so it has the legitimacy to succeed over time. 